there guys, welcome to the meat shop. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make red wine salami. It's an easy one to make, it's fully cooked, kinda like a cheese and crackers or sandwich meat. It's not fermented, doesn't take forever. I'm gonna give you all the steps and the information in the link below. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share it and subscribe it. And uh, without any further ado, let's make some red wine salami. All right YouTube, so this is going to be the red wine salami. Like I said, it's a fully cooked one. It doesn't require balancing pH and uh, environment and mold and bacteria and things like that like traditional salamis do uh, because we're gonna run this one through the smokehouse. It's gonna be fully cooked. Uh, I'm gonna pop it into, I got a 80 millimeter fibrous casing so it's gonna take on some of that smoked flavor. Uh, and this one's gonna be all beef. It's an all beef salami, this one. But you can mix in some pork if you want to. There's a... Uh, uh, there's no rule that makes this one, it has to be beef to be the red wine salami sausage. If you've got pork, venison, waterfowl, kicking around, whatever, this one works pretty good. But I just got uh, 2.5 kgs, so just over 5 pounds of lean ground beef here that I ground up the other day. So it's finished on a 3 to 4 millimeter plate, ready to go, pre-weighed out. The spices for this one is really nice, uh, kind of like an Italian blend, I guess. So we have salt at 15 grams per kilogram, pepper, two grams per kilogram, garlic, and that pepper, I'm using black pepper today, but with this recipe, you can interchange black pepper for white pepper. Uh, it just kind of changes the flavor a little bit. Garlic, 3.5 grams per kilogram. I use granulated garlic. I don't use garlic salt, garlic powder. You can use garlic powder or uh, minced garlic if you want. Uh, chili flakes, two grams per kilogram, just for like a little bit of heat in that. We're using cure, because it's gonna go through the smoking process. So cure number one at three grams per kilogram. And sodium erythrobate, which is a cure accelerator, which you're not, you don't really need in this recipe, um, because it's gonna end up sitting in the cooler for a couple days to develop some flavor. But sodium erythrobate is also a color stabilizer, so if you have an exposed face of meat facing the sun or an LED light, it's gonna hold that nice bright pink red color longer. It also uh, lowers the number of carcinogens in fried meat, so I put it in. And we're gonna use some dry red wine. When you're picking wine out for sausage, and cooking kind of in general, you don't need to use fancy wine. I just got a kind of dry Jackson Triggs. Well, not, they're not really dry, but a Merlot from Jackson Triggs. Pretty cheap wine. So that's what we're gonna use today. That's the recipe, it'll be down in the link below. So, if you don't have a grinder, grab some lean ground beef from your butcher store or green beef and pork mixture. But uh, you wanna shoot for 15% fat to 20% fat in this re uh, recipe because it's going to go through the smokehouse. Any less than 15, you can do less if you want to have a leaner, healthier sausage. It's just a little trickier. You might dry it out a little bit. And then once you kind of get above 25% sausage, you end up you know, with uh, a little bit of grease runoff. You have to watch it a little closer. So 15 to 20 is nice and juicy, and it's probably the easiest for you to run with right off the bat. So. Here's, uh, I'll show you the spices we got mixed up here. Mm, look at those, a little bit of black pepper, granulated garlic, chili flakes in there. About to hit our meat. All right, drizzle that on there. Throw about half of it on. Toss it around a little bit. Toss the rest of it on there. And toss around. Now in this recipe, I don't have a binder. Um, Binder kind of helps with the protein extraction. It's basically binders adding another protein like soy or whey or deheated mustard. But in this recipe, I don't have it because it's going to sit in the fridge for kind of at least overnight, but kind of up to five to seven days because that wine's going to kind of help develop a tangy salami flavor in there. Uh, but we do it in the fridge because uh, this isn't a dry cured recipe. It's not a fermented air dried recipe like, you know, Genoa salami or something like that. So we need to weigh out our wine, we need 125 milliliters. Um, so that's gonna give us, so I'm using wine at 50 grams per kilogram. In my sausages, I usually shoot for 10% moisture, but uh, with this one, 
you kind of want it to be a little denser textured at the end so you don't I don't add the 10% I only add 5% moisture in the form of wine for uh, flavor so I also got a new scale for this my other one crapped the bed I got a my weight KD 8000 off Amazon and so far I like it all right there's our 150 grams of Merlot or just dried cheap red wine smells all right I take a sip but it's 8 a.m. on Sunday morning so that's probably not a great way to start the day <laughs> yeah, all right I'll add this on here now that's gonna help distribute the spices too as we mix around it's gonna really change the aroma of the sausage I can wish you could smell it. I hope you make it so you can smell this. Garlic and wine and beef, garlic, wine and beef. Mm. Oh yes, this is a good sausage. I like this one on cheese and crackers and stuff. Now we don't have any binder and stuff, but we'll still get protein extraction out of the meat because there's obviously protein in meat and that salt helps. But wine is a little bit acidic. So just because these are gonna sit in the cooler for a couple days, uh, when meat's making contact, it's naturally, uh, protein extraction is naturally occurring. So those couple days while it's sitting in the cooler, some protein extraction is going to occur. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't give it a really good thorough mix right now. We still want to shoot for it to stick to our fingers. Also, an optional step here, guys, is if you wanted to have uh, nice particulation in your sausage, you could have some frozen ground back fat. Uh, set aside right now get this really well mixed and then toss them in there just at the last second if you, or, or fat cubes or even a, a denser texture like you could have uh, uh, some pork loin or pork tenderloin uh, cured chunks and pop them in there and they, you'd have a really nice visual but this guy is just going to be kind of a uniform textured salami but I'll give you let you guys know <clears throat> when we get enough protein extraction here all right guys, the sausage is smelling really good. The color has kind of changed from that bright red ground color to kind of that gray cured meat look already. So we're using cure number one, which is the faster cure. And we're happy with that protein extraction. Sticks really good to the fingers. And then that protein extraction is going to continue to occur in the cooler. But the next step is to get it loaded into the sausage stuffer. And if you've seen me do it once, you know how to do it. You just make sure it is good and thoroughly packed into your stuffer. That helps battle the air pockets. Handful, drop her down, beat it in. All right, now I'll bring you guys in for some stuffing. Before I do that though, I'll show you this little fibrous casing, kind of a cool one. So it's an 80 mil, and I thought since we're doing salami, it's got this kind of pre-netted string design on there already, printed on, so I thought that was cool, we'll do that. And then with these guys, you don't have to soak them overnight or anything. I am just going to drop it into my uh, Schaefer pan full of water right now, and by the time I get this in there, it'll be ready to go. Okay guys, so I got our salami loaded in there, got our casing, it's only been soaking for two minutes or so, but basically it's just that you just want to wet up the inside so it's lubed to get on the, the horn basically. And uh, you just pull it down to the bottom of the, the tied end, they will come pre-tied and an open end, and this guy's 80 millimeters so this 2.5 kgs should fit into this whole thing, I think. Let that first look, and with this, you just squeeze tight like you're choking a turkey. Right at the end of the horn, let a little bit of air sneak by your hands, and then squeeze nice and tight and get it good and full. Look at that that's cool casing. You can get all sorts of designs on casings now. I've seen some with stags and, and all sorts of cool stuff. Bears. Oh, there we go. Even, uh, we got more room than I thought. Now what I'll do guys, so I just finished uh, stuffing. I will lift the plunger up. Then I grab the next sized horn down and I just stick a plastic bag over it. 
pull the larger horn off and just get that last little bit out of the horn into our casing. Voila. And there's a little bit at the bottom here, you can see. Pop that out of there. Next, a couple slices. Drop that in. And then we have no waste at all. Okay, and then you just gotta work that down and kind of massage the air pockets out. Work it down. Make sure there's none where you're gonna tie your string. Just choke it down with some good pressure. Massage the air pockets out. Choke her down. And you can see through it here, and if there was any air pockets, I just take a very pointy knife and prick the air pockets out. But now just, all we do is tie that end good and tight. Grab it here at the end. One last squeeze down. Give her a couple twists. If you had one of those hog ring plier things, you could clip a metal ring on there now, but uh, you can just use butcher string, one less gizmo to have, and just tie yourself a uh, nice, pretty tight, I tie them pretty tight because it does want to expand in the cooking step. <laughs> Double knot, nothing fancy. Boom. Okay guys, so there it is. The red wine salami. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop them in the cooler for this guy's probably gonna, I'm gonna do five days, but you, you wanna do at least, at least overnight, but three to seven days in the cooler because that red wine is kinda gonna change the flavor of the meat over time. Uh, if you wanna do like a little experiment, do it in a couple smaller tubes, do one, uh, smoke one at one day, smoke one at three days, and smoke one at seven days, and they'll kinda have different flavors. But I'm gonna do about five days in the cooler, uncovered, and he's gonna lose a little bit of moisture and stuff from there, which will make him a little denser, and then we'll pop him in the smokehouse after five days and smoke and cook him. All right, there's the red wine salami after it's been curing away in the cooler for a couple days. I'm just gonna let it sit at room temperature here for about a half hour, and I got the Traeger warming up, so I'll pop it on the Traeger after that. We just pull it out of the cooler, let the outside dry off for a little bit here, and then uh, smoke it. Okay, so it's just been drying off for about a half hour to an hour. The outside's nice and dry now, so we'll go throw it on the Traeger that's been warming up. The background here, we got Cody and Brendan cutting up top sirloins for the store. Okay, got the Traeger set up. It's warmed up already, guys, so it went through the warm-up cycle. This is smelling really good, by the way. Smell that red wine on there. So we'll just pop it in here. I got it set as low as my trag will go is 165. So I'll let it smoke at 165, 165 for uh, probably two to three hours, and I'll crank it up to 185 and start grabbing a temperature off it. A little bit of smoke rolling there. I'm not sure if that comes through, but I'll just pop it up on this top rack right in the middle. It's ideal to hang them, but if this is what most of you guys got up there, this is this will be fine. Setting them on a rack is fine. I don't set them right down on this lower rack because I find my the heating pot or whatever is right below there, and it'll wrinkle them. So up, up in the middle of your smoker is the best spot for a big chub like this. And uh, we'll come check on them in about two hours. Should start to brighten up, become nice cherry red, and I'll crank it up for the cook. All right, so the smoke has been rolling on the red wine salami for about two hours now, kind of at 165. My Traeger kind of dips down to as low as 150 and like as high as 170, not a big deal. I'm just gonna bump that temperature up to 185 now. 185, and uh, hook this probe up. I don't really trust my Traeger probe. It's not very accurate, I find. So I just kind of use it as a guide and I'll come check it when it's roughly close to what I'm shooting for. And I'm shooting for an internal temperature of 160. And then I'll come check it with my other thermometer here, uh, just to verify the right temperature. And when it's at that 160, we're gonna hit it, uh, we're gonna drop it into an ice bath. Okay, another suggestion I have for you guys when you're using a pellet grill uh, to keep your sausages more plump and juicy, uh, helps avoid the wrinkles and stuff that I see every once in a while on the sausage pages, is to put a pan of hot water in there that's going to create a little bit of a humidity and steam cook them in the last step here. And uh, also my Traeger lid doesn't close very good, so I find that extra humidity helps your end product. So it's been a total of about six and a half hours here on this big 85 millimeter diameter casing. The Traeger smoker says 159. 
We'll just see how close it is. Still nice and plump looking. You can see it there, yeah. Pop my thermometer in. It's nice and firm feeling now. The water's been steaming away. Okay. So it, my thermometer says 158, so it's real close to the Traeger, and that's probably good enough. I know I said I was shooting for 160, but uh, 158 is close enough because it is a really large diameter sausage. It's going to take the middle of that core a little while to cool down. But in the meantime, we don't want the rest of the sausage to wrinkle. So I have an ice bath ready here. I just got some cotton gloves on to handle this. A little ice bath set up, ready to go beside my pellet smoker. Just drop her in. Slow that cooking process down immediately. Kill the trigger. There we go. Just let them sit submerged in there for a couple minutes till the ice is gone. Pop them in the cooler overnight, and then we'll slice and taste them tomorrow morning. All right, guys, so our red wine beef salami has cooled overnight in the cooler. Next morning here, first thing for the guys show up. It's uh, still got that nice, plump texture, no wrinkles. So that's what you get, uh, that's the result caused by the ice bath. So we'll just knock the end off there. Knock the other end off here. This end's a little bit wrinkly. That's the end that had the probe in it. So it's gonna, a little bit of juice is gonna sneak out as you go there, but I'll cut into it and uh, nice and dense. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have a look? Oh, that red wine comes through good. So there we go, guys. Have a look at that. Nice, beautiful color, little bits of fat and beef. I got a little bit of an air pocket there, uh, but that's okay. Little chili flakes and stuff, time to dive into it. Cut ourselves off a little slice here. So it's fully cooked, it's sandwich meat. Good to go. Casing peels off nice and easy. Here we go. Mm-hmm. So good guys. The red wine really comes across strong in this one because it's the only moisture that's in there. Garlic, salt, pepper, a little bit of heat afterwards from the chili flakes. This is a good one to put on your charcuterie board if you're doing one up at home. Good way to use beef, good way to use venison. I hope you guys give it a go. I hope you like it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys. We're going to make more sausage videos in the future. Mm. Take care.